Hey, we're back. Part two um, of how to end mass shootings. Um, if you didn't catch part one, go go watch part one. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to shoot right into continuing on. Let me tell you a story. I was part of a church for a while. You can look back in the, in the history of my videos and you can see that I was doing well in this church. You know, I thought it was a godly church. One that upheld the commandments uh, of God for the most part. They did. And, and, and they got a lot of things right. And, and you know, that's going to be another sermon coming down the pipeline too. But um, right now what I want to say is this. Think of it like, like a ship. Like the Titanic, right? You have the captain of the ship. And then you have the crew. And then you have the passengers of the ship, right? So you have, you have on the Titanic, you have the captain, the crew, and the passengers, right? Well, the captain of the ship kind of represents like the pastor of the church, right? And the crew would represent like the men of the church, the clergyman, if you want, if you want to call them that. And the passengers are basically like the women and children, okay? So keep that in mind as I go through this. Now, it's important to stop these mass shootings by building strong communities, building strong churches, strong families, okay? But in, in order to do this, each member of, of the ship, the passenger, the captains, the, uh, the crew members, they need to know their role. In other words, you know, like the young child doesn't try to go and try to steer the ship and, and say, hey, we're going this way. I want to go to Disneyland. Like, no, no, you're the child your job is, you know, you need to go and play around on the uh, on the deck, right? <laughs> and stay out of the way from the crew members, and, and you know what I mean? The, the young child needs to be taught this, that, hey, you're on the bottom. and But, you know, at the same time, just because you're on the bottom, you're also the most precious cargo on board, right? So it's not like your position is any less value than the captain. You just, just have different roles on the ship. You see, you serve a different function. Long story short... This ship that I was on, this church that I was going to, was running inefficiently because I discovered a major flaw in the system. In, you know, in order for this system to work, each crew member needs to be equal. Jesus said, do not be a respecter of persons. In other words, one crew member does not have the right to tell the other crew members what to do. For example, I have no right to tell my equal, my coworker, or my um, crew member, my fellow sailorman, if you will, <coughs> hey, you can't wear um, you can't wear that tie, you can't wear that color shirt, you can't wear a red shirt, right? Um, or what is this maroon, whatever? You can't wear a, a maroon shirt, bro. And and what I discovered was is this church um, believed that the captain the pastor or whatever, of the ship had like a superpower that he could command certain individuals of the church and give them orders like, like you're not allowed to wear a maroon uh, colored shirt in this church. And, and remember, the captain of the ship has rules to obey as well that supersede even his authority. Let me explain. Even the captain must obey the law of the fleet commander. Okay? And who is our fleet commander? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the fleet commander of every single church out there. So if the commander of the fleet allows the crew members to wear a maroon shirt, the captain cannot come along and say, hey, no maroon shirts allowed. Why? Because the fleet commander said maroon shirts are allowed. Okay? And... So what, what's going to happen in this situation is you're going to have mutiny, okay? If, 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 one of the mem if one of the crew members of the ship realizes that, hey, this commander is unfit for service because he is, is, is going out of line, he is disobeying his superior, okay? You're going to have mutiny. What does mutiny mean? Mutiny just means you're overthrowing the authority in charge because the authority in charge has um, become a tyrant. They're not acting in their proper role. Because when the captain uh, gets out of control, you know, the problem is um, some of the crew members, they will be loyal to the captain and they will forget or overlook 
what the fleet commander said because their loyalty to the captain has been so um, they're so entrenched in it, right? And and when you're at when you're out at sea and your other crew members are like, just listen to the captain, and you're sitting there going like, um, excuse me, uh, the captain is going against his superior. We we have a duty right now to um to you know nip this in the bud right now. Before it gets worse, because what's next? He's what's next? He's gonna do. He's gonna get us into treacherous waters. Who knows what this captain's uh, capable of, right? We gotta get him out and get somebody else in there. But hey, the rest of the crew members ain't backing you up. There's nothing you can do. Anyways, back to my message. How does this relate? Um, if you think of the community, the church as one big ship made up of men who compose the crew, um, you're supposed to get a good crew of men, right, who can run this ship. And out of every crew, you will elect a captain. You know, the crew will say, hey, you know, this guy seems like he's one of the best of us. We're going to elect him. Now, that doesn't mean he has special rights and privileges because everybody's supposed to follow the orders of the fleet commander, remember. And, and you know, the captain should be somebody who's proven themselves capable, who's earned the respect of the other crew members and, and so forth and so on. How does this relate to modern relationships, Sean? Well, if, if the ship as a whole is the community, if, if it's the church, what is a family? Well, a family is the same thing. It's just a smaller ship. Um, think of it almost like a mini ship, a, a sailboat, if you will, right? Where the wife, where now you have the husband, he's the captain of the sailboat. And you have the wife, she represents the crew members. And the children are the passengers or the cargo, right? In other words... Um, if anything goes wrong out at sea, whose responsibility is it? Who's going to take the blame? It's the captain. It's the man, right? So anything goes wrong at sea, the man's going to take responsibility. So it's very important that you as a man, you pick a very good crew member. You pick a very good woman who's going to submit to your authority. In other words, don't get married. Don't get romantically involved at all. And definitely do not head out to sea or try to start a family with a woman who hasn't proven herself capable. What do I mean by this? A woman who doesn't currently have a ship that she's a part of. Okay? If she thinks she's the captain. No. Absolutely no. That's a double no, triple no, double stamp. Definitely no. Okay? If she claims that she's strong and independent one she's lying to you okay now this isn't to say she's necessarily being dishonest but she doesn't know any better maybe right and two she says she's strong and independent she's gonna be a terrible crew member absolutely terrible you know i remember seeing all the red flags of this because you know you go out and find a girl who you who you know man this girl would be perfect she'd be the perfect crew member exactly what i'm looking for right and you want her so bad but unfortunately she's not trained she's not disciplined she doesn't know how to be a part of the ship she doesn't know how to work she doesn't know how to submit to the authority of the captain she thinks she is the captain remember she says i'm strong and independent she basically came out and said i'm the captain I'm the captain of this ship. No. Get her out of there. Go let her crash her own ship, okay? <laughs> Anyways, back to my topic. You cannot, I repeat, cannot train a crew member, a woman at sea. Do not get romantically involved with them and think, oh, I'm going to train her as I go. She's going to learn on the job. No, she's not. Do not take her out to sea. You will sink. She has to learn how to be a good crew member first. She has to learn how to be a good passenger on a ship with a real captain first. That's why the most important criteria that you can judge a woman by is go check out her relationship with her father. If she has a poor relationship with her dad, if, if her dad is not a God-fearing man teaching her, guiding her, and disciplining her in the ways of the Lord, forget it. She's unfit for service. She's dead in the water. She, you know, you you could you can maybe help her, um, tell her, give her guidance on how to get fit for service. But until she get gets fit for service, no.
She cannot be romantically involved with you. She cannot start a family. And I have to be honest with you guys too. Don't try to learn as you go along either. If you're unfit to be a captain of your sailboat, if you're unfit for service, stay out of the game, okay? Like me. You know, I didn't even, and I'm not trying to lift myself up as an example here, but I'm just being honest with you. You know, I didn't even, I didn't even ask a woman out on a date until I was nearly 25 years old, okay? You know, I, now I did, you know, go on a little small dates uh, here and there before then, but basically I didn't get serious until I was 25 years old, okay? Why? Because I knew I was unfit for service. You know, I had too much to learn. And when I was around 25 years old, maybe 26, I started dating. And by the time I got to age 29, 30, I knew that, hey, I'm prepared to be a captain right now. You know, I, I can handle this shit. But unfortunately, I, I was a little too eager to get out to sea, handle my own ship. And I chose a crew member who was unfit for duty. And I pushed her through the qualifications real quick. And I just stamped her on through because <laughs> I wanted to get out to sea, right? I wanted to start this family and get it going. But, you know, be patient, man. Just be patient. Learn from my mistake. I'm here to teach you. And, 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 and so, you know, what can I say? Um, how do I wrap this all up? You know, how do we stop these mass shootings? How do we make our family stronger? Well, the first order of business, and I'm going to speak to the, the women first. We need to get rid of single moms. Single moms are a disaster. If you're a single mom and you're listening to this message, shame on you. Shame on you. But... But don't beat yourself up, okay? You have to pick yourself up. You have to say, hey, okay, I was tricked by the devil. Hey, newsflash, we all were tricked by the devil. So it's okay. Don't beat yourself up. But you need to realize you need to get this fixed quick because you're doing your kids a disservice. You're doing society a disservice, okay? Just get back on course, okay? It's fine. What you need to do is find yourself a captain, okay? And, and I know I can hear you all already, okay? But this guy, he's this, that, and the other. And, and I'm not going to submit to him. He's a loser. Oh, I know, ladies. I know. It can be... It, it, but just listen. You cannot be the captain of the ship. You need a man. Remember, the book of Genesis says your desire is for your husband. You desire a man. Okay? So go find yourself a man. Ideally, it would be your father. Okay? But if you can't do that, find yourself just one man. Just one man. Stick with one man. Okay? A man that you can respect, a man that you can talk to, okay, in secret, in private, a man that you can confide in, a man who will love you, a man who will, who will um, prov um, protect you, care for you. And, and I know, you know, some of you might not have that good relationship with your dad, so it's going to be a struggle to get out there and find a man who can be your honorary dad, okay? And, try, and, and if you can, try to repair your relationship with your dad. That would be the best thing. Um, and I know it's hard because, you know, some of your dads, they don't want to follow this book. They, they don't even know what they're doing themselves. Um, but find yourself a man. Okay. And focus all your attention on serving him and, and block out all the other men. Okay. On social media, in the workforce, in, in, in public, you know, don't deal with any other men until you, until you have a really close, tight knit relationship with this one, one man, your captain. Okay, and, and if all else fails, make your captain Jesus Christ. Make your captain Jesus Christ and say, hey, I'm going to submit to you. I'm going to follow all your commandments. You know what I mean? And you, need to, and you need to take off all that makeup. Take off all the jewelry. Put on modest clothing. No more yoga pants. No pants at all. Okay, get yourself a long, modest dress. Cover your body up so you can avoid... Um, or restrict all the temptations that all the men are going to come at you and give you attention, right? Even if it's just a look, a little whistle, a little whatever, right? Get rid of that. One man. Focus on one man. Um, uh, and Because I know you. You're going to want to put on, oh, just a little bit of makeup. Oh, just a, just, just a little bit of a revealing outfit. Just to get just a little bit of attention from men. Don't do that. No yoga pants. Serve your captain. Build him up. Confide in him. Okay? Go cry on his shoulders and let me give you a secret tip. There's nothing more powerful than going into a man and asking him for help. Ask him for advice. Men love to give you advice. They want to tell you how to do things. 
They want to give you guidance and direction. And, and But, you know, unfortunately, in our modern society, it's hard for a man to discipline you. Okay, so you need to tell him. Be very explicit. Be very specific and tell him. Let him know, hey, I want your discipline. Not only do I want it, I welcome it. And I need it. I need it. Because just like a heroin addict is addicted to heroin, the woman is addicted. You are you are addicted to this this seeking this attention from men in the wrong way. So you need somebody to stop that. You need somebody to discipline and help you with that. And and, and why do you think this whole um, bondage thing and BSD BSDSM or whatever the heck it's called is so popular with women nowadays? You know because they need somebody to keep them in check. They want that. They desire that. They desire somebody to put them in line, straighten them out, whip them when they're bad. You're a bad girl, right? And and give them a slap when they get out of line. You know, women need this. Admit it. They need it. They won't admit it. <laughs> but in their heart, they know they need it. Because Genesis says, the woman's desire is for her husband. And... And when and, and and when you get your bad habits out and your and your captain is genuinely pleased with you, then you know you're you're fit for service. Then you can go out and actively seek a husband, seek a captain that you can start a family with, that you can respect, honor, obey, and and head out to sea and start a family with, and and make sure your father figure, your if if you have to do a, a father figure, an honorary father, or whatever, approves of this man, approves of this husband. And gives you his blessings before before um, you go out there and with them. Now to wrap it up, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak to the men as well, real quick. Same goes for you guys, okay? Get yourself a captain, okay? Get yourself an elder man that you can respect, that that somebody who you believe follows the commandments better than you. Submit to him. Let him guide you. Confide in you. And, 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 and if necessary, discipline you when you act up and help build him up, serve him, make him uh, uh, proud of you. And, and if you can use your dad, that's great. If you don't have a dad, go find somebody who can be your honorary father figure. You know, find somebody online, go to your local community, your church, find somebody. And um, any, you know, I don't want to say anybody, um, but you know, somebody that you respect who follows the commandments, okay, who can guide you and, and, and do not, I repeat, do not bother with women until you're confident enough that you can follow the commandments on your own and you can lead this family to victory. You know, this is the whole concept of the Catholic church, you know, and, and, and having priests, you know, what do they call the priests? They call them father. Oh, father Santiago or, uh, father, um, uh, Dimitri, whatever, you know, the, the priest is supposed to be there for the widows and the fatherless and people who don't have a father figure who, who will teach them and guide them in the truth. And, and sadly, nowadays, you know, the priests have gotten a bad rap, you know, as being pedophiles and, and nobody wants to go to them, you know. Um, but 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 the truth is there there. I'm sure there are a lot of good fathers out there. You know, I I haven't gotten too much into the Catholic Church to to experience that, but I I do know that there are good men out there who you can submit to, who you can respect, and and sadly, you know, the priests have gotten a bad rap, so people don't like to go to them. But go find somebody, okay? I, I'm just I don't want you to get so wrapped up in religion. Always oh, talking Catholic. Always oh, talking like it's. I'm talking about the concept, okay? Conceptualize this. Get yourself a captain. Somebody you respect, somebody who follows the commandments and follows the Bible better than you, who can train you and condition you and recondition you to renew your mind and get you on the right path. Help and, and help grow and, and become stronger. And, and, and like I said, leave the women aside until you're ready. And, 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 and then when you think you're ready, go ask your captain. Say, sir. Am I ready to, to start my own family? Do you think I'm ready to run my own family? If he says yes, then you can go out there and start looking for your first mate. All right? A crew member. A virtuous woman. A woman who also has done the work. Who also knows, hey, I need to submit to the captain. I need to work in this ship. I need to make this thing strong. Okay? And, 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 and she needs to know her role and know her place. Okay? And, and, and the second you meet a girl that you think you like, Introduce her to your captain. 
have her introduce you to her captain. Have the captains meet each other. And if all things go, if, the ca if both captains give you thumbs up and approval, man, you're going to be well on your journey. You are going to embark on the journey of a lifetime of, of glorious happiness and, and family and abundance. And I, and I promise you it's going to be great. Unlike anything you've ever seen or experienced. And if we can get enough people participating in this, following the commandments of God the Father, of this book, the Bible, Jesus Christ, eventually we can rebuild our families, we can rebuild our communities, and we can end these mass shootings for these children who are growing up with no discipline, no guidance, no direction, no family support, no community support, no help. And I have so much to say on the topic, but so little time. And But when people aren't afraid to walk outside their front door anymore, where church leaders don't uh, try to just boss people around because they're on an ego trip. When women don't disrespect their husbands and leave them for no good reason. That's when we can end this. This madness of this mass shooting. This nonsense. Now I don't, I know I didn't use any scriptures to back up my message today for that. I do apologize. Um. But the urgency of this message, I believe, was too important um, to, to take the time to um, back up everything I was saying with Scripture. Like I said, this is a long message. This is almost an hour-long message. So if, if you're reading this, God bless you, and I hope you learn something. Because the Lord, He's teaching me things so fast. I'm just eating it all up, and sometimes I forget that, hey, I need to share it. I need to give it back to my community. I need I need you guys to understand. I need to give it back to you guys. So in the future, you know, I'm going to be coming out with more biblically supported messages. Um, but like I said, you know, I think this message was too important to not just get out there right away. Um, but I encourage you, brothers and sisters, if, you, if you're listening, lift yourselves up. Don't beat yourselves down, you know, just... If, if you've fallen victim like I have in the past, understand that you made a mistake. Forsake it. Don't worry about it. Get back on the right track. Because God wants you on the right track. He wants you, hey, you messed up yesterday? Fix it today. No problem. No problem. God will love to have you back on the right track. Lift yourselves up. Submit to God. And He will guide us in this world of darkness where, where it seems like there is no love. But brothers, I assure you, I assure you there is love out there. And, and as you know, <laughs> I, I still love the woman who I was with in my heart very dearly. And, you know, I always will. You know, it's not like I'm angry with her. I don't resent her um, or anything like that. So if you're in a similar, similar situation too, it's okay. To love them, okay? They still have a place in your heart. But understand that they don't have all the tools, you know? Just like you, you were tricked before too. You know, I was tricked before too. I didn't have all the tools, right? So, you know, if they're blaming you for all the all the messed up nonsense that's going on in society. If they're blaming you for the, 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 um, uh, the relationship caving. Just take it like a man. You know what? That's what I do. Just take it like a man. And I just said, you know what? All right. Yeah, I messed up. But you know what? I'm going to build myself up. I'm going to get back to the training camp. I'm going to learn how to be the best damn captain of my ship. The best damn captain of this whole community. The best damn captain in my sector on this battlefield that I'm in. You know? And it's hard enough. You know? That we, we understand what's going on. But it's damn near impossible if we don't know what's going on. So that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. I'm trying to give you the knowledge and the wisdom bestowed upon me from God the Father in heaven. You know? And some of you guys who, who you don't know any better, you're going to call me a simp. Ah, oh, look at this simp, man. He's still simping. Okay. You, just, just like her, you know, <laughs> I'm just going to say, hey, I don't blame you either, brother. I really don't. Because just like Jesus said, you know, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do, you know. So I don't blame you. You want to call me a simp? All right, bro. That's that's on you. You know, if that's where you're at in your spiritual journey, that's where you're at. And and I'm still gonna help you and encourage you and and to become stronger in your own walk, in your own faith. And you know, remember this. You know, God loved His first love, Israel. Okay, but Israel rejected Him. Okay, and He opened His doors to the Gentiles. So. You know, just because even though 
I may have loved this woman first, you know, you may have loved this person first. And, and you have so much love to offer them. But if they're not going to love you back, if they're not going to do the work, you know, it's okay to move on. It's okay to not let your love go to waste. God didn't let his love go to waste. He said, Israel, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to follow me. You're not going to love me. You're not going to obey me. Well, then I'm going to go to the Gentiles just like that. Boom. All right. And and if my first love, Israel ain't going to love me back, boom, going to the Gentiles. I'm going to find somebody who will. And I promise you guys, I promise you, if you stick with the Lord, you stick with what I'm telling you, um, what the Bible's telling you, all right? I'm just the messenger. And you follow his ways, you're going to find that love. You will. I, I promise you. I guarantee it. 100%. Okay? But you have to get that love from inside you first and the only way you can get that is you have to get it from above you have to get it from God until you you can't give it to somebody else you can't give any love to anybody else until you first get it within yourself and you can only get that love by following God's commandments you have to follow the commandments of God and he will bestow the love upon you just like just like for a woman you know think of it like a man and a woman relationship you know if a woman's respecting her husband She's honoring her captain. You know, she's producing for him, serving him, doing everything she needs to be. There's there's nothing that captain won't do for you. You know, same thing with God. You submit to God. You do God's will. There's nothing that he won't do for you. Nothing. He will protect you. He will bless you. And I promise you, he will bring you somebody in your life to bring you joy and happiness. He will. And uh, somebody who will return the love that you're giving them. Now... My loss is your guys' gain, right? <laughs> my 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 failures are your guys' lessons. So <laughs> I'm putting myself up there for you guys to learn. Um because I want to strengthen the brotherhood, you know? So it's it, it's it's not a loss. What I what I thought I lost is not going to be a complete loss, okay? I'm going to strengthen you brothers. We're going to help each other build this ship together. We're going to create a community of men. I'm going to build a community here in my local state, my local city. A community of men that support each other, that follow the commandments, that love one another as Jesus has taught us to love. Okay? And we're going to build this ship. And when we build it, the women, they'll show up. We don't have to go seeking after them. They'll show up. Just like that old saying goes, if you build it, they will come. But it has to be built on the rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. Holy Bible. Any other thing, the storms are going to come in. They're going to wipe. When the storm comes in, they're going to wipe it down. If you build your rock on, if you build your house on sand, it's going to be a disaster. But if you build it on the truth of Jesus Christ and the commandments, you can't fail. You will not fail, I promise you. Um, so we need to follow the teachings of Jesus to the best of our ability. He's our only hope, gentlemen. That's my message. That's my message. So thank you for listening. It's been a long one. Uh, I'm thankful I got it wrapped up in an hour. That that makes me happy. Um, but feel free to comment, like, subscribe. Uh, I usually don't say that, but I felt like I needed to say it. Um, and as usual, I'm going to give God the last word on this. Um, God bless you guys. Um, I'll see you on the next video. Peace be with you all. Amen. I'm going to do a reading um, from the book of Luke. Uh, the gospel according to St. Luke. We're going to do chapter 8 verses 22 through 25 I believe. God bless you guys. Thanks for listening. Alright. Uh, chapter 8 verse 22 through 25. Here we go. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled with water and were, and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind. And the raging of the waters, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? 
And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the winds and the water to obey him. Word of the Lord. Amen.